My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Thanks for joining us on Native Voice TV. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and you are watching Native Voice TV. I have a really great show for you today because we have a real actor with us today. And I'd like to welcome Joseph Valdez. Welcome, Joseph. Oh, thank you. So glad to be here. Oh, uh, he's in town from the LA area. Yep, I'm in from yeah. LA. And you're gonna be doing a play in San Jose. I'm doing the Memory Stick at San Jose Stage opening this Saturday, that's right. And what's so unique about the Memory Stick? Well, it, it's about uh, a Lakota Sioux um, in the military in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and he's lost his identity. He's through war, through the things that he has seen, through even historical trauma mm -hmm. from uh, reservation life, he's lost kind of who he is. And a feather, an eagle feather, actually falls from the sky in Afghanistan wow. to the burn pit where he works, and he starts to rediscover who he is and he has crazy, the ghost of Crazy Horse there to, to help him out, and he kind of uh, is able to heal the wounds of, of battle, the, the wounds of, of uh, obedience, the wounds of historical trauma. How amazing. Now, how is this associated with Dublin? Didn't I see something yeah, about so, that? Uh, San Jose is actually the sister city of Dublin, Ireland. Right, right. And I guess they got together um, to work on this play. San Jose Stage Company flew over to Ireland and they had readings of several playwrights and they chose Donald O'Kelly. And they chose him because, uh, now I'm paraphrasing, Donald said something like, um, no one has been subjugated like the Irish, save the Native American. And he wrote this play about a Native American in Afghanistan. You know, and it has uh, Irish elements in it. Uh -huh. uh, one of the characters is, is, is from Ireland originally, and she has a lot of um, Irish mythology. That uh -huh. also helps Jack, my character, um, rediscover who he is. And it's, there are comparisons. I saw something in the uh, write-up about Wounded Knee. That's right, yeah. So <laughs> my character's dad was one of the goons uh -huh. that shot up uh, Wounded Knee, who was fighting against the, the American Indian uh -huh. movement in the, in the protest of, of, of 1973. Right. And so, you know, my, my dad in the play fought in Vietnam. He also has the, the battle scars of of Vietnam, he went down the tunnels, you know, and he went down there with a handgun and a knife, and you know, you could just imagine what kind of things he had to deal with down there just right. to survive. Uh -huh. And that carries on through uh, his life after, and our relationship where he was pretty much non-existent. Mm -hmm. He became a drinker, um, and essentially, um, he was never able to overcome that the, the wound of his soul. Um, and so that that also. Um, you know, is something that Jack considers. 
I, mm -hmm. Do I want to be like that? Because ultimately, he knows his dad is a, a, a good human being. Right, right. You know, but he has these scars, and now that he's been through Afghanistan and he's seen things, he understands where his dad is coming from, and you know, he makes up his mind not to do that, to to go and seek um, visions and to seek healing. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, it's 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 a powerful piece of, of storytelling. I'm anxious to see it. We're going to see it on Saturday. Yeah, I can't wait. I had a friend, um, well, it's an elder who's now passed on, and he fought in Vietnam. And because he was native, they thought, okay, he looks a lot like Vietnamese, you know. And they would have him take pictures of the bridges, bridges that they eventually were going to blow up. But at the time, he had no idea why he was taking these pictures, you know. Mm. And so it's the same kind of conflict that you're talking about there. And about just last month, we were in South Dakota, and we went by um, where the battle was. And I said, is that the Jumping Bull Ranch? And it's all deserted now, the house okay. and everything. And so uh, just to hear, you know, this, this story is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I come from a military family. My grandfather mm -hmm. fought in World War II. My uh, godfather fought in Vietnam. My godbrother is an army ranger. You know, so there's a lot of pride that has come with uh, uh, being native and uh, a military family. You know, my grandfather has this amazing story. He he went. Uh, he was in World War II, and he went uh, on the beaches of Normandy. A couple days after D-Day and he survived and he makes his way through France and he gets to Veer and he's shot in the head and he gets taken by German soldiers and he gets to uh, this basement in France somewhere and the German soldiers are drinking and they're having a good time and they keep on offering him wine you know and he's like no I don't want nothing I don't want nothing they offer him a sandwich no I don't want nothing and then the big guys come in and they start to interrogate him. And this is my favorite story that my grandfather used to say. And at this point, he would smile and he'd get that big smile, like grandpa's smile, and uh, he would say, I don't know nothing, I'm Indian. And uh, they said, all right. They made a bed from upstairs. He wow. woke up the next day, nobody was there ran back to Allied forces, and they gave him a cup of coffee. Wow. <laughs> Shot in the head. Uh, they, they sent him to uh, uh, England for three months, helped him heal, and he was back out on the front lines and uh, won a couple more medals, a couple silver stars, and such like that. You know, like my that. dad has a silver star, too, yeah? for being on the beach of Norm Normandy. Yeah. He uh, blew a hole in the wall so they could get through. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Huh? Yeah, my grandfather got his silver star actually in Germany. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of the war, they were trying to build a bridge over a river, and they set my grandfather on the other side of the river to kind of you know, protect it, and there was a, an attempted siege that my grandfather shot down. So that's how he got his, his wow. silver star. Amazing. Yeah. Now you are Danae? Yes, I am Danae. Yes. And, you're fr and your family's from, yes. originally from the New Albuquerque Mexico. area? Yeah, just right. north of Albuquerque. I keep on getting the town wrong. I was never, <laughs> you know, my grandfather was so happy to be back from World War II uh -huh. that he married my grandmother and he had 14 kids. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I have about 35 <laughs> cousins and I'm in the younger, the younger <laughs> end. So I never got the trip to New Mexico. So, uh, so I never got to see where we were from, but I always get the town wrong. I always say Española, but that's wrong. There's a town um, called. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was Española, but it's just north of Albuquerque. Uh, it's near of there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> you're watching Native Voice TV, and we're talking to Joseph Valdez, who's an actor, and he's here in San Jose, so he is performing a play. That's right. A play here in town, and you're doing two plays, too. I'm doing two Tell plays, me about yeah, the other I'm play doing too. this crazy <laughs> thing where I fly wow. back and forth. I'm actually doing a play in Hemet, California. It's California's official state play. It's been going on since 1923. It's based off of true events uh, that happened towards the later part of the 18th, uh, 19th century, excuse me, 1800s. Um, about a uh, Native American man by the name of Juan Diego who mistakenly took the wrong horse and uh, when he tried to bring the horse back actually the guy who owned the horse hunted him down and not only shot him 
shot him with a rifle, then came up to him and shot him several times with a pistol, and then took the, the butt of his rifle and smashed his face in. So there was actually a Native American advocate by the name of Helen Hunt Jackson who had been trying to get Congress to pass uh, friendly Native American uh, legislation and uh, she wouldn't, wasn't able to get anywhere. So she wrote this rom romantic uh, novel called Ramona, kind of as a, as a, uh, a protest to what's going on. And it was the second best-selling romantic novel of the 19th century. Right. And so this town of Hemet, California, where this uh, atrocity took place, um, started this play in 1923, and it's been wow. going on ever since. Three years ago, they readapted the play, and they invited me to be a part of it. And uh, so here I am. I play uh, a Native American character. Uh, the tribe is ambiguous on purpose because it could rep represent right. pretty much any right. Native American in California at mm -hmm. that time. It takes place during the transition from Mexican rule to American rule. So, you know, the Native American community is really searching on ways to survive. My family has gone into sheep shearing. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like we found a great way of, of adapting. And the Americanos come in, and while I'm away uh, ship shearing at the ranch where Ramona is, um, my whole family is, is killed, ah. the village is burnt down, and I come away and I've lost everything, and I've fallen in love with Ramona, and I asked Ramona to come away with me, and we go away together, we have a family, and more devastation happens, oh, you know, goodness. kind of one thing after another, which kind of is what happened right. in California That's true. in the 19th That's century. True. So uh, it's, it's exciting, it's a spectacle, people love it. It's like Romeo and Juliet, uh, except cowboys and Indians. Is it always They're, only performed there? It is only performed the there in this, it's a 5,000 seat amphitheater. It's beautiful outdoor space. Oh There's a God. mountain. I run up and down. I come in on a horse. Wow. There's about 20 horses in the play. I mean, the, the community here loves it. There's about 300 to 500 volunteers that come in and do the play every year. So we have kids on the mountain who come up, and we have uh, uh, native dancers who come in and do uh, powwow-style dancing. Uh, the, the Red Tail Spirit Dancers, they're an amazing group of, of, of uh, American Indians around, uh, I think from Saboba mainly, but they come in and they, they dance and uh, we have powwow, we have drum, and it's just well, such, a, it's such an uplifting, amazing um, thing that I get to be a part of. I have to put that on my bucket list to yeah. go, <laughs> go see That's the right. play. Huh? That's right. So tell me, how long have you been acting? I went to your website and saw your resume. And <laughs> <laughs> you've done a lot of work. Sure, uh, I, you know. <laughs> film work, theater work. Yeah, um, I, was a, I was a pretty shy kid growing up, but my grandmother was an actor. And my really? My mother was an actor. And uh, I, I was like, I'm never going to do this because I am shy. I'm afraid of girls. <laughs> I'm afraid of talking in front of people, so there's no way I'm going to do this. And when my mom went back to school, she studied uh, psychology, but she also studied, uh, she double majored in, in psychology and drama. And uh, I was in middle school, high school at the time, and they asked me, my mom would always get me in the plays. And I did, um, my mom did a lot of Chicano theater, then mm -hmm. they had a Chicano theater program, so my mom did that. She did, uh, what did she, she did Marisol, which I was a part of, um, Stinking Badges by Luis Valdez. You're not uh, related to those Valdez. I'm not, right? no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, and so, and I did Richard III, I was Prince, I was the Prince in Richard III, and so I did that, and then when I got to college, you know, I, I was just searching of, 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 you know, of who I am, identity. Mm -hmm and I just came across theater and I rediscovered writing and then I did rediscovered, you know, oh, this is my voice. I have something to say. Mm -hmm. I have something important to do. I feel empowered. And so I, I went to community college first and there was a regional theater on campus and I did um, this regional theater, which was an amazing, it was a guy from Frank Condon from LA, came in, um, and he talked me into going to USC, 
uh, I, I, it was between Berkeley and USC. I actually signed my letter of intent to go right. to Berkeley. And uh, I went to USC on a presidential scholarship to study theater. Wow. And uh, that's, you know, it's been, I, I've been so happy since. And I've been a part of many projects um, that are just so inspiring and, and uh, just a group of people in theater are j just so um, inspiring, you know, empowering. And, uh, and, and when, you, when you know you're doing your job right, it's like a vacuum. You know, you're on stage and you feel everybody's soul there okay. with you. And there's a lot of power to that. You know, there's a lot of empowerment that can happen in the community. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's so good to see a native actor. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we relish that because they always have somebody play a native. That's right. Right. That's right. It's, <laughs> so it's you know, the history of Hollywood is atrocious in terms yes. of native. I mean, they got Italians to do it, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's starting just to change. Just dark makeup, right? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, just you know, just put red face on, mm -hmm. uh, and everything will be okay, right? And mm -hmm. talk in some kind of weird accent. Exactly. And then you know, it's it, everything's okay, and and uh, it's not okay. We still exist. We're still here. We're survivors, and we're powerful people, and we deserve to tell our own stories. And that's a major thing in the Native American community right now is who's that's allowed right. to tell our stories. That's right. You know, and and. There is power there. I've seen it. I'm a part of a, a, an amazing theater group. Oh, yeah, group. I wanted to ask you about this. I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, I'm a part of a ma an amazing uh, theater group in Los Angeles called Native Voices. I like the name. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and it's uh, the only, I believe it's the only Native American theater company, professional Native American theater mo uh, company that is strictly for Native Americans. So we kind of have this ragtag, motley crew of Native Americans across the country who are in LA, who are actors or writers, who do theater, um, who tell our stories. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's powerful stuff. It's amazing, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it. It actually started because uh, Randy Reinholtz, who is the artistic director, he's Choctaw, I believe. He was a professor at a Midwest college. I don't remember the college. But um, the dean asked them, you know, let's do a Native American play. So they went looking for Native American plays, and they did not find one. Not one. So Randy uh, and his wife, Jean, said, you know what? We're going to create something that, help, that, that gets, attracts Native American playwrights. And so they've been doing it for over 20 years, I believe. And it's, um, it's housed at the Autry Theater uh, not the, the Autry Museum in Los Angeles, and uh, they've been going strong since. That's good. We yeah. need need so many more. Oh, and there's so much stuff going yes, on. Like yes. they're taking. Um, they took Randy uh, adapted Measure for Measure, as a, uh, it's called. Uh, basically, it, it it's adapted into the the boarding school system. Mm -hmm. um, off it's called Off the Rails, and it's going to Ashland, Oregon. It's part of the Ashland, Oregon uh, Shakespeare Festival this year. So, um, yeah, and there's, you know, I have friends that are working um, across the country, both in film and television. So it's, it's really... And uh, we need more. We need I went more. to a play at Santa Clara University, I think it was last year sometime, and the Native role was played by someone else because they didn't have a Native actor at yeah. Santa Clara University. Yeah. And that's one of the first things I asked Ron, who's on the board of the, 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 uh, the stage, he, when he mentioned coming to the theater there. And I said, and about this play. And I go, oh, who's playing the Native American? He goes, it's, he's uh, Dene. And I went, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Made a big difference. Yeah. I mean, really, as a Native person, when you hear that there's going to be a movie or a play or something, you know, it's, you want to know who's playing that's us. That's right. You know? That's right. I mean, and, and the, the Native community is so strong in terms of support, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and it's important. I, I, I also did a, a traveling show with a, a theater group called Will and & Company, and it's basi basically educational theater, mm -hmm. and they have, so basically the premise is, it's been 50 years since the, the March on Washington, Martin Luther King's March on Washington. Mm -hmm. What's been going on? Have things been better, improved? 
and they have different, they have an African American one, they have a Latino one, they also have a Native American one. So what's been going on in the last 50 years since? And it talks, I mean, it hits you hard. It talks about historical trauma, mm -hmm. it talks about suicide, it talks about um, forced sterilization, all these things. And, and, we, and I remember one time we went to uh, Washington, and the state of Washington, Mm -hmm. And we did it at a community college, and this this native teenager was sobbing in the middle of it, like just crying. You could hear her because it, it just hit there. And we finished the play, and she just gave me one of the best hugs I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And her aunt came up to me, and she said, keep doing what you're doing because it matters, because it's important for us to see that we can make it. And I'm just like, I'm just doing this traveling show. Like, I, I, I don't feel like I've made it, you yeah. know. But it's, it's well, important. You're a role model out there. You're a role model for the kids, for the, you know, one of the reservations that I visited recently, they were talking about suicide, the kids. And it's not, they don't talk about trying suicide. It, it was like either they, uh, it's, they say attempted or completed. You know, it's yeah. It's either we're, you know, I mean, it's it's sad. It's sad well, when the kids think there's no hope. You know, there are no future. Well, and I think with Jack, my character, he's originally from Pine Ridge. Now mm -hmm. it it he goes and lives with his grandma in the city, Rapid City, mm -hmm. and um, but there's that same thing that that he's dealt with. You know, like who are who am I? You know, I mean, you look at the boarding, his, Jack's grandparents went through the boarding school system, mm -hmm. you know, where they strip your identity away and they tell you you're a second class citizen. Don't speak the language. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and what was lost there? We still, I mean, some, I, I don't know. I think a lot of us don't know what exactly was lost yeah. in that transition. And, uh, and that's what I think is so powerful that, about this play is like, you know what? Our ancestors are still here. That's right. You know, whether you like, I'm not a spiritual p person or anything like that, but my ancestors are still here. I look up at the sky and I see my ancestors right. and they give me power. I, when I was at USC, I took a, a solo performance class and for our final, we had to write a, between a five and 15 minute solo performance. And I, I, was, I was sitting, I used to lock up the church at USC and so it was quiet and so I'd write there and I just, they didn't know what to write. And I just started writing about this kid lost in the woods, this little boy lost in the woods. And he gets helped by bear. And, and um, I, my favorite myth is the, the uh, cannibalistic basket woman from the, the Northwest. And he's being chased by cannibalistic ba basket woman. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's getting helped by bear and by snake and by a couple other animals. And he makes it to the cliff and White buffalo, calf woman comes out and blesses him and he heals cannibalistic basket woman and, and she turns into this beautiful woman. Mm. You know, like where did that come from? Like, yeah. I just wow. sat down writing, but there was something, you know, whether it's, it's the ancestors, whatever it was, it was telling me, you know what? This is, and it's a mixture of different stories, um, but that's what I wrote and it, it got me, actually, that's how I got introduced to Native Voices in Los Angeles. Um, so. Oh, oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the play on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, so do we have any future plans for big screen? Is that an <laughs> ultimate goal? I hope so. Absolutely. Because <laughs> people would like to see you on the big screen. You know, I, I, you know, I keep on kicking the door. I just haven't, I haven't been able to kick it in yet. So. And you would think with so few native actors you would think, right you would think um it's just uh, it's hard i don't know i just i, I have to solve the equation mm -hmm. and get in there um i have you know i keep on telling important stories powerful stories you know there will be a path for me there is a path for me absolutely and it, it will be in film it will be in television it will be on the stage i will find a way to tell these stories 
So I'll get your autograph now, <laughs> so it'll be also I knew him when. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Before he came, became famous and went inside my paper. <laughs> uh, you're so nice. <laughs> but yeah. no, we're looking forward to that because uh, we don't have that. Yeah. And, and you also teach school? You substitute yeah, for so school, work I, with kids? I, I work with, with kids. I, I teach at a school in South Central. I do long-term subbing, so yeah. if there's a teacher on maternity leave or a teacher gets sick or Sometimes they have open positions. I'll go in there and I'll fill it for 30 days. Uh -huh. um, so right before, actually, I was I just got done teaching AP literature and uh, a writing seminar class uh -huh. with these amazing kids from South Central. Who um, I mean, they they're really special kids and inspirational, and they have so much that they're dealing with. Yeah. Um, but they they get through it. You know, and and uh, I've so learned a lot from them. They have so much potential. They have so much potential. Yeah, you know, they're the cycle of poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to overcome. Absolutely. You know, I was lucky to have my mom who went, you know, and she taught me. She went back to school, and she persevered no matter. I mean, we went through a lot of hard things in our life, a lot of tough things, a lot of some trauma, but she persevered and she showed me the way, which is important. You know, and, and you said she was an act actress? She was an actor, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it an actor, actress? No. <laughs> or is it just actor? Yeah, yeah. Actress, <laughs> actor, yeah. And uh, did she do theater or what did she do? She, oh, yeah. So she went back to school uh, when I was in middle school and she went to Sac State and she studied psychology and drama. So she double oh. majored. And she would, uh, I was a shy kid, so she would, they would get me to do the shows. So I did a couple shows. She did, they had a big Chicano theater program there. So she did a lot of uh, Chicano theater. She did Mighty Soul. Um, she did uh, uh, Stinking Badges by I Luis Valdez. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and it, it just kind of that's when that 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 seed was planted. Mm -hmm. You know that plays or show business. It doesn't have to be glitz and glamour. It could be, you know, the powerful story that inspires, and and that's what I've held on to ever since. Well, that's something Theatre Cafecino does, huh? Just bare minimum, but they that's get their right. point across. That's, that's how right. it started. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, actually, one of my mentors, Frank, actually worked with Luis back when they did theater on the back of trucks. Right, right. Back you in know. the uh, Cesar Chavez boycott days. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And should I say break a leg? <laughs> yeah, break a leg. <laughs> break a leg. Yeah. We'll see you on Saturday, and uh, we'll see you on the big screen soon. I appreciate it. Hopefully. Yeah. One day. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next Sunday. Native Voice TV. Oh